We are here once again to demonstrate against another thief in the country. We cannot accept this injustice. We didn't study to be fooled around with like this. To Nairobi again, because the geopolitical and economic analyst Ali Khan Satsu joins us from there. He is the CEO of Rich Management. Ali Khan, welcome to the program. Um, so many questions around this, but let's look at the legacy of 38 years of one man's rule. How difficult is it to dismantle the apparatus that he, Dos Santos, would have put in place? In other words, how people do business, how institutions like the army uh, operate. How much of his legacy still remains and how much is that a problem for Angola? So uh, President Lurecha, who was uh, considered an insider and uh, the chosen successor of President Dos Santos, has been talking the talk um, he's quantified the amount that's uh, in question, something over $20 billion. But the whole dismantling process, other than decapitating a few very high-profile individuals like Isabel Dos Santos, is proving a lot more difficult. Uh, and, and one has to question whether he really has the will to dismantle the apparatus that was there for more than 30 years. So, look, it's a perfect storm right now. You've got a situation where debt has spiraled out of control. Billions of dollars have gone missing. Inflation rate uh, is over 20 percent. The cost, uh, living cost for everybody on the street is simply out of control. And, you know, the oil price, of course, is not a silver bullet. I mean, it's nowhere near where he needs it. So it's very difficult uh, you know, it's very difficult to understand what's he, what is he going to do next. Further repression will surely just set off a, a, a potentially a time bomb. What do you make of the unrest in terms of how it's being organised, who exactly is out on the streets? Are they uh, groups of people or are they organised in a way that they can actually damage the administration? So I think, you know, this is firstly a phenomena. We're seeing many more street protests across the continent. It's not unique only to Angola. Um, I think for now, there is no clear leadership. It's a little bit leaderless. But, uh, you know, this, this could spiral quite, quite quickly, particularly if the, um, if the government continues with this very uh, hard fist approach. For now, I don't think there's a clear leader of the opposition. It's lead it feels very leaderless. But, uh, yeah, you know, at, at some point, people will come forward, I'm sure. I want to go back to the point which we began this interview with, is about the political elite and the desire, possibly, uh, to not dismantle as much as would be necessary to take the country forward. I'll read you a quote from Osvaldo Silva, who's a journalist in Luanda. He says... The police repress citizens for senseless acts and arrest journalists to mute the reality of this country. Democracy in Angola only applies if you have the position to claim it. The political class works selfishly, selfishly for their own personal gains and the future of their offspring who will continue their legacy. If that rings in any way true, there is no immediate future, a positive future for Angola, surely. So I think, you know, this uh, analysis uh, is actually correct for many parts of Africa. It's not just Angola. But the problem in Angola is you've now reached a point where you've got no free cash flow. All your money is going into debt repayments. And you simply are unable to deliver anything for the masses. And I think that's why you've reached this point. It's entirely unfortunate. I mean, you know, democracy is a funny word when it comes to Africa. It's meaningless. You just have to look across the continent at various elections where the opposition is being stifled or locked up or, in cases like Tanzania, have had to leave the country. So I, I have to agree with those comments. And I just think that Angola is a little bit of a laboratory experiment in the sense that everything is happening all at once. And is there any hope that possibly any external pressure from other African countries might make a difference to the situation. It's long been the case that there are accusations that most African leaders won't criticize uh, those who are in a position of power across the continent because they know that they may be in the same position at any point. That, that, that's completely correct. I mean, you know, just take, for example, the African Union. I don't think the African Union has ever spoken up for the people. 
It is always speaking up for the incumbents in power. And that, you know, no African leader I can think of, other than the Botswana leader, the previous president, has ever spoken up for what is really quite egregious and is a, is a symptom of a disease at the moment. We have very bureaucratic leadership. They've run out of ideas. They've got people whose expectations are rising, and they're simply unable to meet those desires. And we're now reaching a point where we could see the spill out not only of Angola, in many different places across the continent. It's a very, very difficult moment, I think. And essentially, the, the, the ruled are rising up, not just in Luanda, but in many other parts of the continent. Ali Khan Satru, thank you so much indeed for spending time with us on the News Hour. Ali Khan Satru is the CEO of Rich Management.